a blessed day in the Lord. Amen. All right, we're going to open up with our opening song. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. I will rejoice. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And be glad. Oh, oh, oh. this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made. This is the day. This very day that the Lord has made. That the Lord has made. Rejoice, I will rejoice and be glad in it and be glad. Oh, 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 this is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day. day she said the songwriter said this is the day right now this very hour this very right now this is the day to rejoice not next week not tomorrow but this 
this is the day. You know why this is the day? Because it's a choice. It's a choice whether you rejoice. It's a choice whether you be happy. It's a choice whether you praise and worship. It's a decision that you made to rejoice and be glad about it, to be glad in today. Amen. We greet you this morning in the mighty master's names of Jesus the Christ, the Messiah. From on high, we welcome all to Unity Christian Church this morning with the pastors, Pastor Smith, A. at water, bringing that uncompromised, unwatered down word of God because that's what works, the word of God. And we need it and he brings it and he delivers it with power and clarity and we thank him for that. Amen, amen. We welcome all those by way of social media this morning, by the airways, the phone ways, or any kind of way you can connect. Because the word, it was work. Long as you get in that word, you'll be just fine. Hallelujah. The order of service today, December 12, 12, 2021. Get that right. 12, 12, 2021. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> that day. <laughs> I will do a prayer and a scripture, and then we will have a time to share by Deacon Lamar. Amen. I got one amen over there. Hallelujah. Praise God. The word is working. Hallelujah. And then our beautiful praise team will come back up after a time to share from Deacon Lamar. And of course, the word, the message, what we come for, the fellowship. Pastor Smith A. Atwater will bring the message again today. Amen. So get your hearts ready. Get your ears ready. Get your soul ready. We want that fire like Jeremiah said that be shut up in your bone. We want you on fire when you leave here. We don't want you to come in all sad, depressed, oppressed, suppressed. We want you to rejoice and be glad in it. Be glad that you're still here. We got some news the other night, just last night, that one of our dearest friends, uh, when I came back into church in 2002, she passed away from cancer. Been fighting it for a long time. True warrior of God. She passed away. She was the one that, uh, they were the ones who allowed me to be in their fellowship in 2002. Because from 72 to 2002, I, I just wasn't with the church no more. I, I, I gave up on the church. But I had a conversation with this lady who passed away, Teresa Arnold and her husband, Kirk Arnold, and they allowed us to be a part of their membership for about two years. And I thank God for that. I don't take it lightly. I was able to hear God through the word that came through him that made me run to the altar on a Thursday night and I couldn't wait for him to open the doors. I just stood there. I remember that very night that I got saved. I really got saved. And uh, I thank God for them that I was able to hear what thus says the Lord. You know, you, you can't hear it from everybody. It's an appointed time and place that God will speak to you. And you, it's like crystal clear. You know it's God talking to you. This, this, this ain't no regular conversation going on. God is speaking. And I'm ready to obey God. But I just wonder, uh, recognize her. Let us pray. Let us pray. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear God Almighty, once again, Father, we thank you. We love you. We bless your holy name, God, because you are worthy, God. You are great, God. You are almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing, God. Always present, always loving, God. And we thank you for that, God the loving kindness that you give and show toward us. We thank you for your grace and your mercy this morning. The many blessings and favor are allowed from you, God. We thank you. Not that we are so worthy, but because you are so loving and so kind, God. We understand now, God, it's all about you and your kingdom. You reign on the just and the unjust. But our little intellect and judgment get in the way of what you're doing and want to make a decision based on what we know and we don't know. But God, we thank you for choosing us and using us today. Let us be that willing and obedient vessel to do as you command us to do, to say what you allow us to say, to have what you say we can have. God, 
God, we thank you this morning. We bless your holy name this morning, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding coming. We ask now, Holy Spirit, you just rule and reign, have your way from the top of the building to the bottom of the building, from the front door to the back door. It all belongs to you, God. And every vessel in here belongs to you. Use us, God. You choose us and you use us for your glory. For your glory today, God. Let your glory rule and reign in this house today. Let us all bear witness of your glory today, Lord. Your power, your might, but most of all, your Holy Spirit. You said it's going to be by your Spirit that we shall, we shall become who you have created us to be and to do what you have called us to do by your Spirit, God. So Holy Spirit, have your way today. Have your way today. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, I pray. The scripture reading is coming out of the book of Mark, chapter 1. I got the King James Version today. Oh, where my helpers at? Oh, here's my helpers. Voila, I can see. The King James Version, Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. Here as it reads. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem, and all were baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. The word of God for the people of God. And, and just wanted to share this because we've been on this, and even when I uh, tuned in to my church at home, they were on the same thing. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. And as I meditated on that, the thought came to me, a lot of people don't know what their calling or mission is. But here's one right here that we all can be a part of this ministry right here. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. In other words, get yourself right. Get everything out the way that God is not pleased with about you that you can go tell others that it's all about preparing ye the way of the Lord. Because believe it or not, he's coming back. And as we found out in Wednesday night Bible study, it won't be the lamb this time. It won't be a sacrificial lamb this time. He's coming back as the lion of Judah. He's coming back to judge the world for their sins that he paid the penalty for, for those who don't believe he paid that debt. He's coming back to judge them. The day of the Lord, a terrible day for those who have not believed those who have could not confessed and those who have not received him as Lord and Savior of your life. So if you don't know your ministry, there it is. Prepare ye the way. Prepare ye the way. He's coming back, church. You might not be in the five-fold ministry. You might not be in the choir. You might not be a deacon. You might not be in the music ministry. You might have a part in all of that. But prepare ye the way. Amen. Amen. At this time, we will have a time to share from Deacon Lamar. I'm going to prepare the way and get out your way. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Uh, I am uh, Dick Lamar, and I have a few words this morning that might help you out. Uh, I know they help me, so uh, I feel that I'm not the only one in the world. So, uh, but these words, uh, they come from our pastor doing uh, a Bible study. Uh, it was the week before Thanksgiving, and uh, I'm not going to quote his words, 
uh, I had a good minister friend of mine, I always would say, you said this. He said, I didn't say that. <laughs> so what I'm going to tell you is what I understood and the message God sent for me. So you, the, the, the message he sent for you, not for everybody, but so I can tell you the message he sent for me. Uh, so, but it started um, with my uh, oldest son. He, he put me in a situation where I was extremely ang angry, and that's saying it mildly. Uh, but uh, so, only thing I did about it was uh, I complained about it. I complained, and when I finished complaining, I complained some more. Uh, because the anger didn't go away. And no one uh, can make you angry at the people as close to you, uh, the one that you really love, but they can make you the angriest. And, and, and my son did that. He, he had me angry. I was angry for a while. And it was, uh, it was the message before Thanksgiving. We didn't have, I mean, uh, the Bible uh, study before Thanksgiving. We didn't have the kind of what I call the regular Bible study, you know. Pastor said, you know, talking about what we've been thankful for, you know, and and in my mind, I kind of gloss over the little bit. This is regular, you know, we give thank, be thankful for what we have, but uh, it took a whole nother turn for me. It took another turn, and the pastor, he said it was three things, and this is what I heard. It might not have been what he said, but this is what I heard. You know, three things to make your life better, and make you sleep better at night. And this is what I heard. So, but one was don't compare yourself to other or worry about what they got. And I said, shoot, I'm, I'm good on this one. You know, I, I do not worry about what other people got. I'm happy for what my friends got, you know, so I don't worry about what they got. So she, I said, I'm good, you know. And then the second one was, Thank and praise God for everything in your life. You know, I said, I thank God for everything I got. I thank God for my family. Every night I pray, I said, Lord, thank you for the family. I think I got fairly good health. I got a few aches and pains. But uh, uh, I thank God for it. So, you know, I thank God for everything. I thank God for my life, you know. And then the third one, that kind of hit me. It says, don't complain until you no longer feel the presence of God. And when he said that, it, I had to go back up to number two. Because <laughs> it says, thank and praise God for everything in your life. Amen. I'm praising God for my good health, my family. I'm praising God. I ain't praising God for this situation I'm in now. And I, I'm angry, you know. And, and that's a bad place to be, yeah. you know. And I complain, well, you know. I quit feeling the presence of God, and when he said that, it's like, and like I said, I went back to number two. It said, thank and praise God for every, it didn't say something, it didn't say for the good health you had in life, it didn't say for the family you have or the money, it said for everything. So I had to praise God for the situation I was in, and I wasn't doing that. I was complaining. Now, that's all I was doing was complaining. So, you know, it says praise God for everything. Yeah. You know, and God know where you are. You know, don't think he don't know. You know, he allowed this situation to happen for a reason. And you ought to be thankful that he care enough for you to allow you to be in this situation to make you better. So, uh, that, I was like, you know, I went into that Bible study. You know, thinking, oh, yeah, it's a regular round of the mill Bible study. You know, we've been given thankful, but it, it changed a whole lot of things in my life. And it made me forgive. You know, we, we got to forgive, you know. Uh, and, and, and I hadn't forgave my son because I was angry. I was still angry because the situation had left and I was still angry. So we got to get forgive. Uh, we got to be more loving and more caring. You know, uh, we in the season with the birth of our Lord and the Savior, and we got to be more loving people. We got to be more forgiving people, you know, and get angry is ugly. <laughs> Take it from me, angry is ugly. So, but 
That's all I got to say. I hope it helps somebody as much as it have helped me. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. What a mighty God we
It will Come be alright. Did I tell you? It will be alright. Did I tell you? It will be alright. Did I tell you not to worry? It will be alright. Did I tell you not to worry? It will be alright. Oh, it will be alright. It will be alright. It will be alright. It will be alright. Did I tell you? 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 It will be alright. Alright, 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 Somebody tell God thank you today. 
Come on, come on, come on, put those hands together. Bless the name of the Lord Jesus in his house. Bless him when you call him. Bless him when you know he's listening. Bless him because of who he is. His name is Jesus. Come on, somebody help me call him and say Jesus. Somebody help me say the name of Jesus. If you want victory, call on the name of Jesus. If you are tired of walking in defeat, call the name of Jesus. When you get weary in your natural being, let your spirit man be renewed by calling on the name of Jesus. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you today. Amen. We thank God today for pressing your way to the house of the Lord. When the enemy said, no, you said you're a liar, and I'm going in to give my God all the praise that is due to him. So we came here today to lift up the name of Jesus. We came him to tell him thank you and to bless him because of who he is. Amen. While you're standing, amen, we're going to go ahead and pray and let's hear what thus says the Lord on today. You all have already preached your message. You've already, amen, touched and walked over some of the things that God has already given to me, which let me know that he just wants a few points to be pushed today. But it's good to know Jesus, amen. Do you love him today? Do you love the Lord today? For those of you who are viewing this broadcast, I want you to, amen, humble your hearts right now and just understand that God is still in the blessing business. He has never stopped loving you and he has not stopped blessing you. So let's go before his throne right now and thank him for who he is. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and bless you for another day. We thank you for this opportunity that you have given us on this second Sunday in December to come into your house, to be present in the midst, to just tell you thank you for being so good to us. And now, Lord, as we prepare to share your word on today, we pray that you would saturate the atmosphere with your glory. Do it in a way that makes preaching easy. Do it in a way that opened up ears today, oh God, to receive. So we thank you for who you are and for what you're doing. And as I decrease, I pray that your presence would increase in this house right now. And we give you all the honor, all the glory, and all of the praise belongs to you. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless you. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord and Savior. Jesus the Christ. Good morning, UCC. Good morning to those who are viewing us by way of Facebook and later by way of YouTube. Truly, we thank God for you tuning in to this broadcast from the Unity Christian Church. We're located at 426 Rivers Road in Fayetteville, Georgia. And whenever you have, amen, an opportunity to tune in, we pray and know that God will have something for you to grab hold to. So on behalf of myself, Sister Atwood, our family, and the entire membership of the Unity Christian Church, we say welcome into this sanctuary where the presence of the Lord is always here. Amen. Today, 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 we know that we are in the Christmas season. And if you don't think uh, that you are, you haven't been in a store, you haven't been uh, uh, been bombarded by mail that lets you know that, amen, that it's not about Jesus, it's about making the dollar. And amen, during this season, stores and businesses say that when they, when they were in the red after the Christmas season, red should go to black, which means that they were not making money before the Christmas season. After the Christmas season, they should be turning a profit for the year. So to them, it's all about the Benjamin. It's all about the dollar. It's all about what can they get from you. But we are here to thank God for what he has done for us. And his name is Jesus. So without further ado, amen. So much has already been done in the praise. Thank you. Amen. Our praise team just took us on into one of those uh, worship times. 
praise time. I mean, amen. Where well, we just get in there, we pull back some of those songs where you can't help but to move your feet and bop your head and shake your shoulders. And if you don't, then amen. Let me shake you and be sure you are still awake. Because the words of the praise songs have a sincere meaning. What's his name? His name is Jesus. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to lift him up. I came to praise his name. Amen. And on and on and on, those songs, they have uh, brought us through so many different journeys, so many different perils and life's uh, challenges. But God has never left us, nor has he forsaken us. Let's go into the word of the Lord on today. Let's open our Bibles to Acts chapter 9, and we will be reading verses 3 through 7. Acts chapter 9, verses 3 through 7. Amen. And I will be reading from the NASB translation. There's opening scriptures on today. Acts chapter 9, verses 3 through 7. And the word of the Lord declares, As he was traveling, it happened that he was approaching Damascus. And suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him, and he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting. But get up and enter the city, and it will be told you what you must do. The men who traveled with him stood speechless, hearing the voice, but seeing no one. May the Lord bless the reading and the hearing of his holy word. While you're standing, let's pray our corporate prayer at this time. And for those of you who are viewing, please pray along with us. Just repeat after me and just say, Lord Jesus, please prepare my ears to hear your word. Prepare my heart. To receive your word. Prepare my eyes to see that your word is alive. And prepare my body to be your temple for the living word. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, on this beautiful Lord's day. We want to speak to you from these words of this question. Do you hear what I hear? Do you hear what I hear? We know that's a Christmas carol. Amen. And it says, do you hear what I hear? And as I was uh, that phrase for all week long, it seemed like it just kept coming back to me. Do you hear what I hear. And I'm like, Lord, what is it that I'm supposed to be hearing? <laughs> and so it would come back again. Do you hear? And then it changed a little bit. It said, do you hear what I want you to hear? And so that's a little different now. Do you hear what I hear? Okay, Lord, I might not hear what you're saying or what you're speaking, but then you say, am I hearing what you want me to hear? And so as I did a little background research on the carol, I found out a few things here. Let me share this with you. This Christmas carol was composed in October of 1962. We think it would be much older than that, wouldn't we? The lyrics were written by Noel uh, Rickney, and the music was provided by his wife, Gloria Shane Baker. They created this carol as an appeal for peace during the Cuban Missile Crisis. They wrote this carol as an appeal for peace during the Cuban Missile Crisis. And for those of us who are old enough to remember that time, it was a very scary time. We thought that the world was about to come to its conclusion. Uh, Russia and the Soviet Union, who was going to blink first, Khrushchev or Kennedy? And so it was such a time where uh, peace was fleeting. 
And so they wrote this carol and the lyrics to recall the birth of Jesus and the events that were surrounding the traditional Christmas story. But the carol was really to focus on the fact that uh, God was speaking in the midst of all of this trouble. But do we hear what he's saying to us? We're going to look at those lyrics in just a few minutes here. But it seems like today we have trouble listening and hearing the voice of God. Amen. Seems like, amen, people refuse to even acknowledge that God is even anywhere near us. And we know that Jesus is Emmanuel, which means what? God with us. And so during this season, if, if at no other time, we should be focused on the very fact that God wants us to hear him now through all of the noise. Through all of the clutter, through all of the distractions, we can miss what God is truly saying to us during this season of, of, of blessings. And so many people don't even understand how blessed they are. They, that, that spirit of depression seems to take hold like a cloak, like a duck. I mean, it just comes upon people. We were talking a little bit earlier uh, in the back that uh, Mr. Greg and I were talking about uh, just what happens when you lose loved ones during a holiday season. And then every year about that time, yeah, that's a different type of feeling that you have now about that holiday because it's ushering in something that, amen, you are trying to deal with. And so when we look at this thing here and these verses that's in this song, let me just uh, pull out something real quick. In the very first verse of the carol, do you hear what I hear? Listen to these words. It says, said the night wind to the little lamb. Now, you got to get in here a little deep now. The night wind, the wind, the blowing, the spirit of God saying to that which is humble. And we know Jesus came as a lamb. The night wind, the spirit, and Jesus uh, could be having a conversation here. And, in, and the Holy Spirit said to the little lamb, do you see what I see? See, he didn't start out asking, do you hear what I hear? He said, do you see? what I see. And he said, way up in the sky, little lamb, do you see what I see? I'm, I'm here and I'm looking down and I see some things. Little lamb, a star, a star, you're going to come. That star is going to point to where you're going to be born. A star dancing in the night with a tail as big as a kite. Said the little lamb now to the shepherd boy. The little lamb, Jesus himself. Now, we come now. We are believers. And, and, and the lamb, Jesus, the one who's going to sacrifice himself, is speaking to the little shepherd boy. And then he asks, do you hear what I hear? Are you hearing what I'm hearing? You who have rejected me, you who have not accepted who I am. A song, a song high above the trees with a voice as big as the sea. You can't miss this thing if your ears are open to hear what God is saying. Do you hear what I hear? Hey Amen. Are you going to stop rejecting my voice and start listening to my voice? Do you hear what I hear? And then said the shepherd boy to the mighty king, the believer who stopped running from God. Now he's looking at our king, our God. The shepherd boy said to the mighty king, do you know what I know? In your palace, warm mighty king, do you know what I know? A child, a child shivers in the cold. Let us bring him silver and gold. Let us bring him silver and gold. Let us take care of those who are shivering in the cold. We know that Jesus was shivering in the manger. But then let's, fight, let's fast forward here. There are people who are shivering in the cold today. Do you see what I see? Do you know what I know? Do you know there's a need today? Do you know what I know? There's a children, there are families that's hurting. They're shivering in the cold. And then the last verse says, set the king to the people everywhere. Now God is speaking to those everywhere. Listen to what I say. He wants us to hear what he's saying. Listen to what I say. Pray for peace. People everywhere. Who's praying for peace when there's nothing but turmoil and torments and things that's going on? People who should be in leadership in, 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 in a religious uh, uh, environment, in a political environment. Those who amen, should be leading and praying for peace everywhere, not stirring up turmoil and, 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 and speaking words of hate to each other and lying. 
causing issues that continue to go on and on and on, trying to give a different narrative from the reality that we're living in. You can't change the reality. You can only lie about what you see. And when you understand that the reality is the reality, we got to go to the king. When the king said, listen to what I say, the child, the child sleeping in the night, he will bring us goodness and light. The answer is in Jesus. He will bring us goodness and chase away darkness, which is light. The answer is in Jesus. So when we look at that character and then we come to Brother Paul, I, I had to look at this situation that Paul was in to be able to connect some dots here. Yes, we're in the Christmas season, but God's voice is still resonating. God is calling us not only during the Christmas season, he's calling us all year long. He's calling us every time Amen. that we need to hear from him. Reminds me of a story that I read, that I heard about this man. He was having difficulty communicating with his wife. So he concluded that she must be hard of hearing. So he decided he was going to do a test. And one evening, he sat in a chair on the other side of the room, and her back was turned to him so she couldn't see him. And so very quietly, he whispered, can you hear me? There was no response. So he moved a little closer, and he said again, can you hear me now? Still no reply. He moved a little bit closer, and he whispered the same words, but still she did not answer. Finally, he moved right in behind her chair, right behind her ears, and said, can you hear me now? To his surprise, she turned around, and she was irritated. She said, for the fourth time, yes. The problem was not with her hearing. The problem was with his hearing. We treat God like that, don't we? God, didn't you hear me when I asked you to move and do that thing for me? God, didn't you hear me when I said I need you now and I need you to go and I need you to do this and, and I need you to do that? The problem is not in the fact that God don't hear us. The problem is in the fact that we don't hear God when he answers us. Do you hear what I hear? Paul was a man hard of hearing. Paul thought that he was doing right. Paul was zealous in all that he did. And because he was so zealous, I mean, God realized that this man will give his very all to whatever he puts his hands to do. Paul thought that, amen, Christianity was a cult. He thought it was a perverted form of Judaism. He thought they had taken the laws of Moses and they were twisting the very foundation of what he had been taught. So Paul was upset and he was going to do all that he could do to eliminate this problem for these people who were coming against God. So because, amen, he was so zealous, he decided he was going to go in and he was going to chase these Christians or those who were in the way wherever he could find them and he was going to arrest them. Acts chapter 9. Verse 1 and 2 said this. Now Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked for letters from him to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, both men and women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Saul had the papers. Saul had whatever he needed, his criteria, to be able to go in and to arrest Christians. He called them those who were in who are and of the way. And then the scriptures that we read in Acts 9, 3 through 7 tells us what happened to him from his point of view. I'm sorry, from Luke's point of view. Luke was writing in Acts in chapter 9 about what Luke was recording that happened to Saul. Saul gives his own personal testimony of what happened to him in Acts chapter 22 and Acts chapter 26 as he was testifying and speaking to the Jewish people and also to King Agrippa. You can check that out a little later. But these three go hand in hand and you get a little bit of information about what was happening in each one of the sections during these three chapters in the book of Acts. 
But in Acts chapter 9, verses 3 through 7, we find out that he was going on his way, going to Damascus, doing what he thought that he was supposed to do. And then he heard a voice saying to him, he heard a voice saying to him after he saw this bright light. And the other uh, scriptures let us know that amen, this happened at midday, at noontime, when the sun should have been its highest. There's nothing that's brighter than God, his glory. Well, I shine anything that he has made or ever will be made. So his glory got the attention of Saul and those who were with him at noontime. And they all heard the voice, but they, some could not even understand what God was saying. The Bible said they heard him, but they did not understand. Only Saul was able to understand the voice that came from heaven. See, there's some points we want to share with you. Josh, let's go ahead and pull those up right now. Let's go ahead and share these seven points because we're going to wrap this up here sooner rather than later. Let me talk to you about what happens when God's, God's voice is heard. Saul heard the voice of God. The others that were there just heard a noise. They didn't understand what was being uh, said, but they heard something rumbling around in the atmosphere. Sometimes when Jesus and God was speaking and he was testifying about who Jesus was, the other people they say they sound like thunder. See, when God is speaking, even though we all can be in the same room, right? And this is one of the bullet points, so let me not jump the gun. The first point that I want to share with you about what, what happens when God's voice is heard. God's voice, number one, God's voice will come while we are trying to do what we think God wants us to do. In other words, you got to be doing something for God as far as what you know. Saul thought that he was right in what he was doing, but he was just as wrong as he could be. So God showed up to let him know, hey, your heart desires to do something for me, but your actions are not on point. Your actions are not pleasing to me. So I got to correct you because I see you moving. And Paul said, yeah, my people, the Jewish brothers, they have zeal, but without knowledge. A lot of times people have a lot of zeal. They want to go out and do a lot of stuff, but they're doing it the wrong way that can really mess up other people. But God's voice will come to us while we are trying to do what we think God wants us to do. First thing is, humble yourself before the hand of God and let him know that you want to do uh, what he wants you to do. And his voice will speak to you. The second point is, God's voice will cause us to change direction. The voice of God will cause us to change direction. At times, we always want to hear the word from the Lord to be an encouragement to us. We love Psalm 23 and John 3.16. We love that. But there are some time the voice of God must deal with our attitudes, must deal with the actions that we are taking. Amen. And if anybody tells you that, amen, you're just perfect and you don't need to change, everything is just great, God can't uh, do anything in your life to help you to become more effective for him, you need to run out of that place. Yes. That was a song, the lyrics of this song. It was written by a man by the name of Steve Taylor. And he said this, he said, so you say it's of the Lord and you got no choice. Because you heard a revelation from a still, small voice. But if the Bible doesn't back it, then it seems quite clear. Perhaps it was the devil who whispered in your ear. So loud tap here, the voice, got, it's a still, small voice. Yeah, but if it don't line up with this word, it might as well be a shouting voice to tell you to get up out of there. Because the devil know how to whisper too. He'll whisper a whole lot of stuff in your ear. And before you know it, you will be falling prey to what he's whispering in your ears. So, amen. But God's voice will cause us to change direction if he needs to direct us in a different path. And if we don't acknowledge who we are and the wrong that we are doing, we can never hear the voice of God accurately. 
We must acknowledge that we are not perfect. We must acknowledge that we mess up. God wants us to do that so he can build us up and take us higher in him. Who can go higher when you will not acknowledge the wrong that continues to hold you down? How can you go higher when you're still being held down by the same thing over and over and over? So God's voice will cause us to change direction. Number three, God's voice will show us our sin despite our sincerity. As we said, Saul was sincere, but he was still wrong. So you can be sincerely wrong and mess up people sincerely. And the voice of God will speak and drop right into the atmosphere where we are sincerely occupying space. And he will sincerely direct us into where he wants us to go. If we will listen and hear the voice of God. Anybody ever heard the voice of God speak to you and say, now you know better than that. You know that's not the direction that you should be going. But then there's still what? A struggle. And even if we don't win the struggle the first time, he loves us so much, he's going to come right back. And he will come back and not give us the peace to do that wrong until we reject him completely and totally and tell him, I don't want you in my life. Why? Because he's just that loving. Jesus is the one who makes it possible. This is what we celebrate so that we can hear what he's saying to us. Number four, God's voice will come in a recognizable form. What do I mean? Acts 26, verses 13 through 15. Acts 26, verses 13 through 15. This is when Paul is giving his testimony to King Agrippa in this chapter of Acts. Uh, verse 13, Acts 26, 13. The word said, At midday, O king, I saw on the way a light from heaven brighter than the sun shining all around me and those who were journeying with me. Same thing that we heard in Acts chapter 9. Verse 14. And when we had all fallen to the ground, I heard a voice saying to me in the Hebrew dialect, See, Paul now gives us more information how God was speaking to him specifically. See, Paul uh, had a lot of language that he was knowledgeable in. He spoke Greek, Latin, you know, and regular Hebrew. But this dialect was a different form of the Hebrew language, and it was his mother language. So it was something that Paul specifically related to that came directly to him. God will speak to us in a recognizable form. We will recognize him when he's speaking. You might try to ignore him, but you know that's God. Amen. He has a way of getting our attention unlike any other person or any other thing. Yes. Number five, God's clear voice to one individual might not be clear to others. I think we already touched on that just a little bit. As Paul, amen, was there and the others were there with him, amen, they heard it, but they did not understand it. And because they did not understand what was going on, amen, that it didn't mean anything to them. So they, they were with him, but if you don't understand it, if you don't have understanding, then it does you no good for the voice to be in the atmosphere. They saw the light, but they didn't see anyone. Why? Because God has a specific call and a specific message for each one of us who yield ourselves to him. So it's specific to you. Two more, verse number, uh, point number six. Following God's voice may lead to being alone. Following God's voice may lead to being alone. Some people are not willing to count up the cost. Saul was singled out to do something that most Jews did not want to do. God told them, you're going to go to the Gentiles. And you're going to help them to be saved. Yeah. And because of that, Paul was, uh, when he became Paul, Saul was persecuted. He was beaten. What? He was shipwrecked. He was stoned, left for dead, all of these things. And he found himself alone many, many times. Some people just say, Lord, I don't want to uh, answer your call because they're not going to like me. They're not going to want to hear what I got to say. But if you want to grow higher in God, if he sees something specifically in you, you got to say yes in order to get to where God is trying to take you to. Every time you say no, the end result is not going to be that good for you. 
Because God is trying to remove us away from something and take us into where he has already prepared the blessings. And finally, God's voice can be both a sudden and also a gradual revelation. It can be a sudden call, but that's not going to be the end. The first time God speaks to you, get ready to receive more. In Acts 26, verses 16 through 18. Acts 26, verses 16 through 18. The word said, but get up and stand on your feet. This is what God told Saul. For this purpose, I have appeared to you to appoint you a minister and a witness, not only to the things which you have seen, but also to the things in which I will appear to you. So I give you this part to bring you to a point. But that's not the end of your uh, hearing from God. That's not the end of God going to direct you, to rescue you from the Jewish people and from the Gentile. I'm going to appear to you. I'm going to rescue you. You don't have to be worried about what people are going to do to you. Uh, from the Gentiles to whom I am sending you. Why? To open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the dominion of Satan to God that they may receive forgiveness of sins and an inheritance among those who have been sanctified by faith in me. So those seven points, when you want to hear, when you want to know and prepare yourself to receive what, when God is going to be speaking, focus on those seven things. And when God begins to speak to you, realize that that's just the beginning of your journey. That's not the end. He's going to develop, he's going to grow, and he's going to prosper. So in my conclusion today, as we have been asking this question, do you hear what I hear? We all need to hear the voice of God today. No matter what position you occupy, no matter uh, whether or not you consider yourself to be a major player or a minor participant, it does not matter. All things will work together for the good of God, for those who love him and those who are the called according to his purpose. But the only criteria is that you love God and allow yourself to be called. And once you are called, open up your spiritual ear. Do you see what I see? Do you see God moving and trying to get the attention of people everywhere in this nation today? The pandemic would have been long gone. We would not still be looking at a thousand people dying every single day. And people are not even putting that on the front page anymore because it's trying to be suppressed and to keep love on the back burner. If people are not concerned about each other, we keep sharing this. They are not we, but people keep sharing this thing one with the other when the spirit of love would say, no, look, wear your face mask. Socially distant. When love is in the atmosphere, then I'm going to conquer all of the things that keep feeding off of hate and envy and pride and jealousy. And when people keep talking about my freedom, my freedom, that's a bondage statement. Your freedom is keeping the whole nation, this world in bondage, which means it is not freedom. Freedom is when we come together. And I'm concerned about you and you're concerned about me. And do it like we see that God is laying it out. Did we not say when God speak, we will hear? When God is moving and giving answers, we will see it? It's up to us to decide whether or not we're going to accept it. But we can't blame God when he's already moving and putting it and making it possible. Today, do you hear what I hear? Do you see what I see in this world? Do you hear what I hear among the people who just continue to not show forth the love one to the other? Let me share this with you, and we're going to pray. Here at UCC, we had a church bus that we put in storage, basically. And as we were deciding what we were going to do with that bus, God began to send a voice to us for a homeless ministry. And as the board met, we talked about it, and then we met with the young lady who was starting and who was spearheading this homeless ministry. She said, if I just had this, we could take all of these clothes and all of these goods and all of this and, and help to feed and clothe the hungry because I have to do it on a street ministry uh, uh, because they would not let them gather anymore in one place. So I have to be mobile and take these things. We said, oh, my God. So we donated the church bus that we had to the homeless ministry. And man, why? Because we heard 
heard the voice of God. We were saying, we can sell, we can convert this and do this, this, and this. The voice of God said, no, I will give you whatever yeah, I want you to have. But this is another call. Are you going to obey me or not? You must listen to the voice of God. When you do not obey God, you are cutting off your own blessings. So I encourage you this season, during this Christmas season, keep your ears open to hear what thus says the Lord. We're going to come in contact with a lot of different things. Everything is not above board. That's why you got to have the Holy Spirit. Everything is not above board. There are people out there who would try to take advantage of people who are generous and who have a loving heart. We understand that. But then there are some real needs that God wants us to meet. Do you hear what I hear? If you're listening to this message and you're not saved... You're not sure, amen, that you are really where God wants you to be, but you want to be there. And so you've not really yielded your life to Jesus. Who, who, Jesus is the answer to everything. Jesus is the answer to every situation and circumstance. The grief, the pain, the peace that we need is through Jesus Christ. So if you're not saved, you decide to give your life to the Lord, we would be remiss if we did not pause right where we are and give you the opportunity to pray the prayer of salvation and repentance and give your life to the Lord. So if you desire to be saved, to live with the Lord Jesus, not playing church, but you want to become the church, Christ in you, just repeat this prayer after me. Humble your heart, lift your spirits, raise your hands towards heaven and just say, Lord Jesus, please forgive me for all of my sins. Whatever is wrong, I will no longer do. Whatever is right, that will I do. I thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. I thank you, Jesus, for being resurrected for me. So that whenever I come up short and I repent, I know that I will be forgiven because you are my advocate. Come into my heart now. Be my Lord and my Savior. I thank you that I am saved through your blood. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Father, during this season, we thank you for all that you are, all that you've done, and as Paul is our example, God, of how you call, in the midst of an agenda that we might think is right, but it's still not pleasing in your sight. You must and desire to correct us. Give us a spirit that we can be taught, God. And then help us to go forward now. Help us to hear you so that we will not be confused when we hear your voice. And we give you honor, glory, and praise as we go forward in your name. And it is so. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on and tell the Lord thank you on today. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you on this day that the Lord has made. Let us continue to be in prayer one for the other. Amen. For those who have lost loved ones, amen, we are certainly lifting you up in prayer and asking that the peace and the joy of the Lord will continue to be your strength as well. On next Sunday, we will have our Christmas celebration focus service here in our socially distanced setup. If you would like to join us here, amen, we'll try our very best to accommodate you here. And members, we certainly would like to have you to be here. We'll send out something during the week with more information for that. Amen. But if you cannot be here, please join us via our live stream by Facebook at 11.15 a.m. via Facebook Live. So we thank God for all that has been done, all that has taken place. Unity, you're such a beautiful people, and we thank you for your continuing support that allows us to continue to do the things that God has placed on our heart to do for his glory. Let us stand as we prepare to go down from his house on today. And I love the songs that were sung today. Some of those were my favorite songs, Sister Kim. Yeah, I don't know what you come to do, but I came to lift them up. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you today as we have assembled here to lift up your name. 
We thank you, oh God, for your word that has gone forward on today, and we thank you for your people. We thank you that, amen, as you continue to speak to us, help us to hear what you desire for us to hear. And Father, only let us receive the unadulterated word that you sent, not a compromise, not a counterfeit version of who you are. And as we go forward on this day, let us be an, an encourager of those who we come in contact with as we speak truth and not a lie. And now as we go forward today, go out before us and cover the highways and byways with your precious blood. We pray that no hurt, harm, or danger will befall us as we go. And when we arrive at our appointed destination, we will go in and give you all the honor, the glory, and the praise. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide henceforth now and forevermore. We go in peace and we sin no more. God bless you. You are dismissed. Stay tuned for the announcements in Jesus' name. Amen.